Hey everybody, SF Logic Ninja here, or David Earl. I don't care what you call me. Um, so I've been sitting here uh, looking at the comments and various feedback uh, that I've got over the past couple videos, and I'm, I'm really torn uh, because one side says only show them the cool, really uh, advanced stuff, and then the other part of me is like, some of these people don't even know how to quantize. So I'm going to make the attempt to um, make two videos tonight. Uh, the first one's going to be on using logic and reason together, which was the original lesson plan that I had kind of laid out. And then the next one, I'm going to try and show uh, some really basic rudimentary stuff in the arrange window. That one will be a lot shorter. And hopefully I'll make it home before 1 in the morning. Okay. Uh, thanks again for watching. Um, I've, you know, I'm getting a lot of subscribers and... Um, it's just, you know, it, 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 I've had some really nice comments, and uh, thank you all for watching, and uh, let's get to it. All right, so using Rewire. Rewire is basically an inter-applications bus that was built by Propellerheads, the guys who gave us Reason. Um, Reason is a really great beat-making program um, created by the guys over Propellerheads. Uh, really well-made, very, very solid, um, pretty stable, too. Um, and when you're running logic, you have the ability to actually have reason slave to you, and you can use the powerful editing capabilities of logic while getting the cool sounds that you have in reason. So what we need to do this is we need basically a two-lane highway in rewire. We need the MIDI to come out, the MIDI and timing information to come out of logic and go to reason. And then we need reason to send the audio information back into logic. So we need two different types of objects in the logic environment in order to do this. We need to have something that sends MIDI, which is going to be the rewire MIDI object, imagine that. And then we need an auxiliary to be listening for the audio that's coming back from Reason. So let's start by just having, we have logic open right now, and I'm going to go open Reason. Like I said, when you open up logic first and then you open up Reason, then Reason will automatically go into this mode called rewire slave mode. So this is called the hardware interface up here. This is basically showing the uh, audio part of our superhighway here. Uh, the audio that's going to go back to logic is all represented here in the hardware interface. If I flip the rack around by hitting tab, it shows me outputs 1 through 64. OK? <laughs> Please ignore the vacuum. Um, I'm going back over to logic here. So in logic, if I add external MIDI, what an external MIDI object is in Logic is it's basically saying, OK, we're going to take the MIDI that comes onto this track, and we're either going to send it to an application within the computer, another application within the computer, or we're going to send it out to an external device, like an MPC or a, or a Roland synthesizer or something like that. It's actually going to physically send the MIDI outside of Logic to go control something. OK? So I'm going to hit Create, and it defaults to a general MIDI device. So over to the right here, I can see in my library, now that I have an external MIDI device in my track list, I've got a Reason folder. If I click there, the Reason folder is automatically going to give me a representation of what I have in Reason right now. So in Reason right now, all I have is a hardware interface. I'm going to start adding things to my rack in Reason so that uh, I can control them from logic. So I'm going to hop back over to Reason. I'm going to say create mixer, and then I'm going to create a subtractor. Now, both of these are devices, so they're both going to show up in my uh, library in Logic now. So if I go click on Logic, I can see that I can select either the hardware interface, the mixer, or the subtractor. So I'll select the subtractor. There it is, right? Now, how the MIDI is going to react. If I, if I play right now, I'm not getting anything, right? But if I jump back over to Reason, I can see that there's, there's audio being generated. The subtractor is being played. So we set up the MIDI correctly. The MIDI is going, it's controlling subtractor. Subtractor is sending its audio signal to the mixer, which is going into the hardware mixer, which is going to logic, right? OK, and there's the rub. 
we did not create an auxiliary yet to listen to these outputs. So I'm going to go back to Logic. I'm going to open up a mixer down below here. It's X if you uh, want to know the key command. And I'm going to hit the plus button. When you do that, it automatically creates an auxiliary. And it's asking, hey, what do you want it to be? And I'm like, I want it to be stereo. I want it to listen to input. Oh, look at this. It can either be an input, a bus, Ableton Live, which is another program I have on here that is uh, rewire capable, or Reason. So I'm going to go to Reason, mix left and right. Now, it says mix left and right, but technically, it's one and two. I hit Create. Now, hopefully, if I've done everything right, if I hit a note on the keyboard, I hear the sound coming out of Reason. So I could go back up into my arrange window and I could record. And it'll play back. Now, of course, I hit the uh, first note a little early, so I'd probably go in there and edit this so that it didn't start. Yeah, see, it's starting at 0, 4, 4, 2, 16, so. I would just drag that over. Yeah, there you go. And then maybe I'd quantize it by selecting it, going to quantize, and go to 16th notes. Well, it's tight. It's a little square, but it's good. So anyway, that's the basics of hooking up reason to logic and having logic control reason. So, a couple caveats to our lesson here. First of all, your reason song should be saved in your project folder with the project that you are working on in logic. Um, that will keep everything nice and organized. Uh, second thing, um, sometimes when you create a loop in logic and reason is looping in the background, um, some MIDI notes can get hung up. It's just something that if it happens, it's normal, it's just a little glitchy. That being said, it's often a really, really good idea once you have your reason parts together, like let's say it's Dr. Rex or a, or a bass line or something really cool that you did using uh, reason instruments that you can't get anywhere else. Um, it's a really good idea to take the auxiliaries that are listening to the audio back from reason and record them to an audio track. And the way you do that is you take the auxiliary's output and assign it to a bus and then you take an audio track and you assign its input to the same bus as the output of that auxiliary. That basically allows you to uh, record all of the reason stuff as audio and the next time you open up your logic session you don't necessarily have to open up reason to hear what you did. Uh, and if you needed to make an edit you could always open up reason again, mute the audio track and check it out. So um, there you go. There's a nice basic introduction on how to do it. And I'm going to go to the next part. Ciao.